formed at the edge of the Thompson River, this powwow is historic. <laughs> This is Canada's very first Truth and Reconciliation Day. On this day, the Sequatmec First Nation is both honoring tradition and claiming justice. Because just a few steps away from here, thanks to a special raider, they found the remains of more than 200 children. I love my brother so much. And so he is living on through his son and through his grandmother and great-grandchildren. The First Nation believes the remains could be of children who attended the Camp Loops Indian Residential School, and they could be the first of many more across Canada. The families and the communities were not properly informed of the fate of the children who did not make it home. We believe this is one such situation of mass human rights violations, and we are concerned it might reflect criminal behavior, including suggesting violations of humanitarian law and genocide. We need to ensure that justice and accountability happens in the long term, which means keeping pressure on our politicians and the church to do the right thing. From the end of the 19th century up to the 1990s, the church and the state tried to fix what they called the Indian problem. For indigenous peoples, these centers were synonymous with forced internment, bad treatment, torture, and sometimes even rape. Children were malnourished and often sick. Diane Morgan remembers the time she spent here at the beginning of the 1950s. Kids that tried to escape they were always found and brought back by the police. Everything was kind of new to us, but the food-wise, and it wasn't very nourishing. They didn't say where they were after they got sick and passed. Um, so as a grandmother, a mother, and a great-grandmother, you think of all of those mothers that are, are hurting inside. And I feel that pain for them because I have children. It was cruel here. For more than a century, 150,000 Indigenous peoples from First Nations, Meti and Inuit were interned in these institutions, conceived as history books say to kill the Indian and the child. The Kamloops Bishop admits this painful past was inflicted by the church and authorities. The Congregation of the Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate was in charge of the local residential school. The bishop says their main intention was to offer children an education. We have a very uh, sad, very dark history in Canada, not only the Catholic Church, but also the, the government of Canada. The sister have worked hard to bring that education to the children. We may have made a mistake, however, a lot of good things that sister did offer to the children. As a church, we have to live with humility, saying that if that really affects uh, very negatively on people, then we need to offer the uh, apology. To improve dialogue and reconciliation, the diocese says it's teaching its priests and parishioners the culture, traditions, and spirituality of indigenous peoples. According to a Globe and Mail investigation, the church never fully paid the reparations it promised to the victims of residential schools, but did share their archives with authorities. We received those records in 2019. It's a real mix of information, um, but it's very most of it is very administrative around uh, the operations of the school, but it should be considered one part of a larger puzzle. In the quest to identify the bodies, families and victims depend on the church's archives, but they're incomplete and scattered. Some are not shared due to the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act. According to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, at least 3,200 children never went back home, and the efforts deployed to support families and victims were too slow. I've been hopeful before, and then seeing progress be very slow and plodding, um, and not nearly fired by the urgency that I think it warrants. It isn't just about finding and locating the missing children. It is also about marking this deeply in our national consciousness so that those of us who have not 
who have claimed to still not know will learn and will remember and will not forget. In 2015, the Commission called for the creation of a National Council that would evaluate the progress made for national reconciliation. So far, it hasn't happened. Canadian bishops have apologized for the role the Church played in residential schools, but not the Pope. He is set to host a delegation of Indigenous people from Canada in December.